I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm an instructor at the Institute of Culinary Education, and I've been a chef for 24 years. I'm not great at being awake in the morning, so I'm not gonna make a big meal, but a breakfast sandwich? Perfect. It's a breakfast sandwich, to which I call Filipino Cuban American sandwich, because it's kind of like a Cuban. I definitely have Filipino stuff in it, and then we're in America. So here's, here's my thought on breakfast sandwiches. Usually they're pretty good, but with a little care and a little bit of technique, they're great. They don't necessarily have to be fancy, but they need to have someone that cares making them. The bread that you choose for your breakfast sandwich, I would say is super, super important. This is like a really nice fluffy roll. The very first thing that I'm gonna be doing is just slicing my bread. Bread, which is a Cuban bread, into what my nieces call fun buns. They like the corners. The first thing we're gonna do is make cream biscuits. It might not be as tender as the biscuit with butter or shortening in it, but it holds up really well to having it on a sandwich. This is what you normally do in a sandwich. You put some mustard in it. I'm actually gonna do the same thing on the outside portions of it. I know it's a little weird, but it's gonna taste good, I promise you. So in my bowl, I have some all-purpose flour. I'm gonna add some baking powder, some sugar, and some salt. And I'm just gonna whisk that together. <laughs> Look away, everyone, I, I got butter. <laughs> I have about a cup and a half of cream. I'm just gonna stir it together. I'm gonna take a little bench flour and get this out onto the table. Handle it really carefully, because I don't wanna work the gluten, and I want these biscuits to be nice and tender. Go ahead and put this here. Believe it or not, it's actually only on simmer. The people who burn bread, it baffles me, because you're standing right here. <laughs> just watch your food. I'm just gonna lightly toast uh, my roll in the toaster oven. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. I don't want it super Just looking for like a golden brown, you know? Just like warm and toasty, because you really want to get that full texture and flavor profile. I'm a scientist. Just gonna cut this right down the middle and try and get six fairly equal biscuits. The sheet tray is lined with a little parchment paper. Take a little melted butter. This is gonna give them a little brown color on top. We're gonna put these in the oven for about 350, 375 for about 15, 20 minutes. All right, so while my bread is toasting, I'm just going to fry up some bologna. If you don't like bologna, you're crazy. Unless you're a vegan, in which case, do what you want. Langwanisa is a staple, delicious Filipino sausage. Now I'm gonna make my sausage. I'm gonna add some vegetable oil. We'll start with a small onion. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. Uh, I'm gonna cut my garlic, just give it a little whack, and just kind of give it a rough chop. We sweat it out a little, and then we're gonna let it cool. So I really prefer a thick cut slice of bologna. If you find the paper thin slices of bologna, do not buy that. That's the wrong bologna. <laughs> At least for this, it's good for a lot of other things. The good thing about this pork shoulder is that it's got a lot of fat in it. What I like to do is cut it into long strips. This way, when I feed it into the grinder, I could just go one long strip at a time. Some onions and garlic. Adding the ice, I'm gonna add a little water or moisture to my mix. It's also gonna push the rest of the pork out. I'm gonna put in about a cup of water. I'm gonna use five little Langwanisa sausages. Cover it till it boils, and then I'll turn it down. So now that we have our pork ground, we're gonna add spices and seasonings. So I love thyme. It really does boost up that nice uh, meaty flavor. I'm gonna take the sage, pull the stems off, get it nice and fine. A little bit of brown sugar, chili flakes, tons of black pepper, and then salt. The water is just gonna help emulsify it. It'll add a little moisture to the sausage. All right, so we got a nice simmer. That's what we want. That is beautiful. Pretty much done. Longuinista, ready to go. I test it by getting a ball, and if it sticks on my hand, it's a little tacky, then I'm good to go. Flatten it out a little, get onto my tray. Nice and flat. So I'm just putting a little bit of butter. butter. I think breakfast sandwich, I think butter. So I'm just gonna cut the paper around them and I'm gonna flop it into the pan. You're gonna get that little ring of browning and that's how you know it's good. Oh yes, now it's becoming fragrant. Yeah, that's, that's the smell of, uh, of love. <laughs> you know, you do this for people that you care about. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this one and see if it's browning. It's not really brown, so I'm flipping it back. Copyright Emily Duncan 2020. <laughs> kind of starting to set. I can pull my paper off. If you just press down on it and it's not soft and sinking in, you're looking pretty good. And I think we're really good here with this. Move it on to this smoked off the bone ham. We're just gonna brush the mustard all over. We'll just get a little sugar. Butter, it's nice to cook with butter. Place these mustard and sugar side down. You don't wanna cook it too long because it'll dry it out. But don't you worry because I have pineapple juice. 
All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is slice my avocado for my breakfast sandwich. And uh, before I do that, I'm just gonna throw this towel over my shoulder because I've always wanted to do that. I think it's all about the towel, right? I'm just sort of like going around the pit, basically. And then I can just kind of twist it off and like that. I'm literally gonna take my potatoes, put it in my water, turn it up to simmer this down a bit. So I'm just peeling the skin off of my avocado. Ta-da, and I'll use, ooh. I'm gonna just give it a little slice. I'm just gonna use half an onion here. I'm gonna saute you later. Parsley, this is really just my decor. I'm gonna scoop these out. I like to grate my cheese for my egg sandwiches. It melts a little bit quicker than slices. And I'm gonna use pepper jack. We have a lot of fatty items, and the pepper in this is gonna kinda cut through some of that fattiness. I lay it flat and I just push. So a little bit of butter, and it's in salt. Pepper. I'm gonna prep my fingerlip potatoes. I kinda like it, that thickness. Take these out, add a little bit of oil, and oh, look at these things. They're so cute. Kinda nice looking, right? Different colors, no? I don't know who I was waiting to answer. <laughs> Sauteed onions. You know, I could actually just put that like that right now. There, you got some lion-eggs potatoes, folks. This wonderful beef steak is just gonna be cut in the two thick pieces. Come on now. That is beautiful. Salt, pepper, beef steak, tomato. I don't know why I started singing for y'all. All right, my bun is all toasted. This is Swiss cheese. I'm gonna throw this into the broiler and since I have fun buns, it's gonna go everywhere. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm going to turn this sucker on. You'll notice if you look in my pan, I've saved the fat from the sausage. This has some really nice flavor in it, okay? So let's ninja. I'm not gonna look. Success! Salt and pepper. We've seasoned everything here throughout the process. Why wouldn't I season my eggs? So I'm just gonna get under this and give We're it a flip. Pass. Yes, yes! I'm gonna just turn this off now and let it cook a little bit more while I put my cheese on, which I almost forgot. The cheese isn't totally melted, but I'm gonna call this done because I want that yolk to stay nice and soft. Again, getting under my yolk first. Put this down on here. Looking at my eggs, they're ready to go. I would say a breakfast sandwich should have an egg. If you offered me a breakfast sandwich and there is listed in it, was this, this, but no egg, I would hand it right back to you. <laughs> say it's missing something. What's wrong with you? I don't necessarily believe that a breakfast sandwich needs to have an egg. If you don't like eggs or you can't eat eggs, skip the egg, just use sausage and cheese. So, now I'm going to assemble my breakfast sandwich. I'm just putting my bologna on top of my egg. This is mayonnaise that I'm putting on right now. Judge me if you must. Putting a little hot sauce on there, and then I'm going to gently arrange my avocado. Every bite should be like the same, yet different, you know? You don't want a sandwich where you're like, oh, that was the one good bite. I put the ham first. Lionade's potatoes. My mouth's watering already. I'm not even halfway done. Okay, next, tomato. Now, Lunguinisa. Bear with me, Lunguinisa. Don't fall off my sandwich. <laughs> my God, help me. No, honestly, breakfast sandwich. Eggs in the sandwich, you guys. Come on now. And fun size, fun size. I got my biscuit, it's square. It's not super high, it's not super fluffy. Not a big deal, it's nice and tender and soft. So I wanna get down there and cut it in half. Open it up, look at a beautiful crumb inside there. I'm gonna put down my plate. Sausage goes down first. I'm gonna add my eggs and stagger them. If I cut this in half, there'll be a yolk on both sides. Just a little bit of hot sauce on top. Cover it with your lid. And there we have it, my breakfast sandwich. And this is my breakfast sandwich. Look at my face. <laughs> and this is my breakfast sandwich. I'm gonna give it a taste. I'm ready. Oh, well, well, that. It's a monster, a delicious monster. I'm a hype man for this sandwich now. Um, sandwich. Fantastic! Delicious, delicious, honestly. I need to put it down. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> you know it's good when it gets all over your face and you don't care? Delicious. Not too much heat, 
Good creaminess from the cheese. The sausage has some great flavor. And my eggs are still a little runny. That's a good thing. Breakfast sandwiches are a delicious way to start your day. Let's see how each of our chefs stacked their sandwiches. Emily used a Kaiser roll, also known as a Vienna roll. They're slightly crusty on the outside, round and fluffy inside, but sturdy enough to handle several ingredients. Because they are store-bought and made in large quantities, they likely have mono and diglycerides to emulsify the dough, potassium bromate to strengthen the gluten and ensure the dough rises consistently, as well as azodicarbonamide, which is a dough conditioner, which ensures the crumb remains nice and white. Lorenzo used a Cuban bread, which is similar to a baguette, but usually has some fat added and is more flat than round. He cut the loaf into a large portion size and toasted both sides of the bread with butter and Dijon mustard. I want it toasted, like a regular toast, like toast. Frank made his own homemade biscuit for his sandwich, which is a quick bread because it relies on the chemical leavener, baking soda, to raise the dough. He simply mixed wet ingredients into the dry. I'm gonna use all the cream, we need all of it. Traditional biscuits are made with solid fat that's cut into flour and formed into sheets when rolled. Water in the fat turns to steam and leavens the biscuits, creating flaky layers when they're baked in a hot oven. Frank's version is more sturdy than traditional biscuits because by adding heavy cream, he encourages some gluten development but because he didn't knead his dough, it still remains tender. Do you want it to be able to, as you bite into it, the sandwich doesn't squeeze out the back? Emily included bologna, mayonnaise, American cheese, avocado, and hot sauce. It's so multi-layered, so many flavors and textures. Bologna is an emulsified cooked sausage made from beef and pork with seasonings and preservatives. It's mixed together to form a very fine texture. Water is usually added and nitrites are too, which give the bologna its persistently pink color no matter how long you cook it. American cheese is a blend of cheeses processed with heat and emulsifying agents such as sodium salts of phosphoric acid. And it melts really easily, making it a popular cheese for hot sandwiches such as cheeseburgers and Emily's breakfast sandwich. I have chosen American cheese because it's the cheese that melts easiest. And it tastes good, nothing wrong with that. Emily's choice of adding avocado is a nice touch because it's rich in monounsaturated fatty acids and is also extremely smooth, making her additions a nice combination of smooth, fatty, and salty. Adding a dash of hot sauce also gives a nice flavor to go along with her other additions. Lorenzo adds potatoes, Swiss cheese, sausage and ham, brown sugar, and tomato on his sandwich. I'm telling you, this sandwich is just a monster. Longanisa sausage is a type that varies from country to country and region to region. It's usually seasoned with local spices. The commonality is that it's generally a harder sausage that's red in color. The Filipino version that Lorenzo uses is made from chicken and beef with lots of garlic. He boiled the sausages first to slowly heat them through and then added vegetable oil to brown them, giving them a roasted quality. He then used cast iron, which holds heat well, to brown the sausages evenly. He also used ham that was cooked and smoked on the bone so it brings an earthy, salty, and roasted flavor due to the formation of pyridine compounds during the smoking process. Lorenzo seasoned his ham with brown sugar and pineapple juice, which tenderizes the ham a bit because of the proteolytic enzymes it contains before adding Swiss cheese. Lorenzo is the only one of our chefs to add tomato, which is a soft, slightly fruity, and colorful addition to his sandwich. Frank made his own breakfast sausage patties out of pork butt, which is a tougher shoulder cut with lots of flavor, spices, onions, and garlic. He grinds his pork with a savory onion mixture that he pre-cooked. And sage, thyme, chili flakes, sugar, salt, and pepper are added after grinding so he can easily control the seasoning. This is a traditional flavor profile for American breakfast sausage. He fried his sausage in a little butter in a flat saute pan so that maximum surface area of the sausage patty 
comes in contact with the hot pan. This encourages caramelization and Maillard browning and adds so much flavor to his delicious sausage. Frank also uses pepper jack cheese, which is a variation of Monterey Jack cheese made from cow's milk from the United States. It's flavored with garlic, habanero chilies, sweet peppers, a bit of rosemary, and jalapenos. It's spicy but buttery at the same time. The sriracha Frank adds is an extra spicy kick to his breakfast sandwich. Each of our three chefs fried eggs for their sandwiches. Emily used the same pan to fry her egg as she used for frying her bologna with a touch more butter. The saltiness from the bologna will complement her eggs nicely. She fried her egg over hard and added the American cheese directly to the egg. It adheres well and will stay together in her sandwich. Lorenzo fried two eggs in a nonstick pan with oil and butter. Oil mainly for heat transfer and cooking and butter for flavor. Frank also fried his two eggs in the same saute pan that he used for sausage, which adds a layer of seasoning for his eggs. Frank wanted his yolks to be runny, and since egg whites and yolks coagulate at different temperatures, you can have a solid, white, opaque egg white and still have a runny yolk. The white will harden around 140 degrees Fahrenheit and the yolk around 150 degrees Fahrenheit, due to the high concentration of lipids in the yolk. Structurally, whites and yolks are made of different biomolecules. Egg whites, also called albumin, are mostly globular, water-soluble proteins and water. It's very sensitive once heat energy is added to the system. Yolks, on the other hand, are a combination of fats, including phospholipids, triacylglycerols, and cholesterol, along with less protein than the whites plus lipid-soluble vitamins, some minerals, and pigments. Structurally, there are more varied types of biomolecules in the yolk than the white, so they essentially interfere with each other and require more heat energy in order to change state from liquid to solid. Emily butters her toasted Kaiser roll and adds the egg and cheese, followed by bologna and avocado. Toasting her roll gives it a more firm structure so it'll hold the other ingredients. It also adds a layer of friction between the bread and the egg, making her sandwich more stable. So like a three, four on the toaster oven, if you're wondering? Lorenzo made a huge sandwich. He added his cheese to his toasted Cuban bread and broiled it so that it melted. Melting is an endothermic reaction where added heat breaks bonds that hold proteins together and with water in the cheese form a liquid mass. He then adds ham, potatoes, tomatoes, longanisa sausages, then his egg and tops the sandwich with bread. This is a delicious but inherently unstable mass of ingredients of different shapes and textures. You'll need lots of napkins. It's messy, but it's good. Frank's assembly is simple and perfect. He cuts his biscuit in half lengthwise, adds the freshly ground and fried sausage, adds his egg and cheese, and finishes with sriracha. His ratios of ingredients is balanced from a taste perspective, but also, and importantly, this sandwich easily fits into your mouth so that you get every flavor in each bite. I hope you'll consider some of these tips to satisfy your craving for a breakfast sandwich, even if it's not for breakfast.